Let me ask you about coal for a couple of minutes. A lot of our work is bringing cases against the EPA to force the strengthening of standards that will apply to all coal burning power plants. And we've had great results recently and we're seeing a slowdown and practically cessation of yeah. building new plants and the beginnings finally of retirements of old, dirty coal burning power plants. You've written about the importance of these kinds of environmental standards as one of the pillars of American greatness. Can you talk about why is, it one, why is this one of the pillars of American greatness? Well, you know, standards are good in and of themselves for the health um, uh, and safety that they preserve. But standards also are huge drivers of innovation. Um, and time and again, uh, whenever the EPA or the Department of Transportation has set standards for automobiles. Let's take safety ones, not just clean air ones. Historically, the automobile industries, you know, squeal. This is going to cost us our, this is the end of the industry. This could be the end of Western civilization. It could be the end of the Milky Way galaxy if you make us install catalytic converters on our cars. And lo and behold, every time we insist on it, not only does the industry install them, they install them at a price far below um, uh, most often the projections, and they end up spawning a whole new set of technologies yeah. that become export uh, products for that industry. It, this it, it's, a, it's a pattern. You see it over and over again. And that's why these uh, legal cases have important, I think, uh, industrial policy implications. Yeah. There's a similar standard setting body of work that we do mm -hmm. on compelling strong energy efficiency standards for appliances and equipment the furnace in your house, the air conditioner in the in the store, the dishwasher, and we're having good results with the Department of right. Energy on that. What, what's the importance of those kind of Well, standards? it reminds me of something I wrote in, in my book, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, which is uh, I had a whole chapter on, on that, and the chapter title was called, If It Isn't Boring, It Isn't Green. <laughs> because the people who are doing the, everyone wants to be Al Gore. God bless him. I mean, Al Gore did a huge service in uh, highlighting um, the whole issue of climate change, and he won a Nobel Prize for it, rightfully, and an Academy Award. Everyone dreams, God, I'd love to be on the right side of things, win a Nobel Prize, win an Academy Award, and, and have everyone recognize me in airports. You know, and stop me and say, thank you for what you do. Now, I'm in a bet trip. No one's ever stopped you in an airport and said, thank you for that legal case you won to raise air conditioning standards. But in winning that legal case to raise the air conditioning standards, to raise uh, to, to raise the efficiency of uh, soda pop machines, okay, and how much electricity they yes, can use, exactly. to to raise the, the the efficiency of refrigerators, you are doing as much to save the environment as any of the most well-known crusaders. But to do what you do, it's a little boring. You got to know the law. You got to slog through a lot of case law. You got to learn the technology. And then you got to marry the two. And it's a long, hard fight. And no one's going to stop you at the airport. Trip, trip. Can I get your audio? Can I get a picture with you? But in fact, Earth Justice, um, EDF, Conservation International, um, uh, NRDC, these are great organizations. The, the people fighting these regulatory battles, these are the true heroes of green, in my view. Yeah. Thank you.